First of all, I want to say thank you to Pastor Christina as she started this thing off for us on Thursday and we walked through deliverance. And I know that many of you were set free from some things that you were bogged down with. And I thought that was just an amazing way to start this conference off. So could you please give her a hand? <laughs> Thank you, Pastor Christina. And then Erica took us through just because you don't see things clearly or the way that we think that we should see them, that sometimes we're blinded. Jesus is never, ever, ever forsaken us. And he is always with us and walking in front of us, behind us, beside us, into next week, into last week, and into next year. We just have to remove the blinders and take in the word of God. Amen. So we know that we are never, ever, ever alone. And we don't have to run around like Jess and Vicki with blindfolds on feeling our way through life. All we have to do is follow the footsteps of Jesus. Amen. And this morning, we talked about what our bodies are going to be like one day. And I think we ought to clap because I want Jesus to make sure he does an extra good job on this room <laughs> when we get there. Amen. Like that we are the favorite girls. <laughs> but now, because so many of us have so many precious loved ones in heaven, I thought it would be really amazing if we could just get a glimpse of what our loved ones are seeing and what they're experiencing. So on those, those holidays that come along and you start to miss those special people and, or when those birthdays come and, you know, we kind of get a little quiet on those days and those memories start flooding back. I thought it would be really nice for the next time one of those days come if we could picture what they're seeing and what they're doing. And maybe those days don't have to be sad anymore. Maybe those days could literally be a celebration. And maybe we should start feeling envious and jealous <laughs> because what they're experiencing is nothing short than paradise, you guys. And it's selfish for us to wish them back here because most of them were suffering. And, you know, I know it's human nature and it's in our flesh, of course. But they are so much better off. And they're going to be standing at that gate waiting for you to arrive you know, have you seen that picture where it shows the first day in heaven? Have any of you seen that on the internet? It's a beautiful painting and it shows you walking. I want you to each picture yourself walking through the gate. And every person that ever loved you just comes running. And they just wrap their arms around you. And they just love you. It'll be the most incredible feeling we have ever experienced in our life. And that's just with our loved ones. That's not even before we see Jesus. Jesus. Perfect love the person that loves you more than anybody in this entire world will be standing there ready to welcome you. And he's gone on to prepare a place for you and he has paradise waiting. And we're gonna take a glimpse into what paradise just might look like because that's what the word of God has to say. How many of you wanna go to paradise? How many of you want to fall at the feet of Jesus? I don't think I ever want to get back up.
what is heaven like? Peter describes it this way. The present heavens and earth are reserved for fire being kept for the day of judgment and destruction of the ungodly. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire. The earth and everything down in it will be laid bare. But we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth. The book of Revelation 21 and 22 tells us of the new heaven and the earth, the dazzling city with foundations that will descend from the sky and become the capital city of God's eternal kingdom. We must realize that the city of the Jerusalem, New Jerusalem is not really heaven per se. It's the capital city of heaven. Picture seeing the capital city of heaven descending from the heavens down to earth. That's what the word of God says. And everything that we need will be in that city. It will literally descend, fully designed, and built to the earth. John saw this. God showed him this. He visually saw this with his eyes, this happening. This is going to happen. He heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men and he will dwell with them and they will be his people he's talking about you and i we will be his people we will dwell with him god himself will be with them and be their god and god will wipe away every single tear that day he will wipe away our tears and there shall be no more death no more sorrow no more crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Then he who sits on the throne said, Behold, I will make all things new. I want you to say that. All things new. All things. And he said to me, Write, for these words are true and faithful that is found in Revelation 21 verses 1 through 5. I encourage you, do your own study on this. John said the city was already created and built, coming out of the highest heaven. Jesus referred to New Jerusalem in Revelation 3 verse 12 as the city of my God. If we try to imagine the size of heaven in comparison to the cities on earth and miles, Tina, I thought of you as I, I found this out. The largest city right now known is in Sitka, Alaska. The population is less than 10,000 people, but it covers 4,801 square miles larger than Rhode Island, Delaware, and the District of Columbia combined. It is said to be beautiful, but Sitka pales in comparison to the New Jerusalem. And I wondered, you know, I, I talked with Sherry Kunal earlier today, and we shared a similar thought when the time comes to go to heaven, we're all taught, you know, we're gonna go and we're gonna say hallelujah and praise you Jesus and we're going to sing to God, but is that all we were going to do? No, that's not all we're going to do. And we're not, I wondered, are we going to be on top of one another? No, there's plenty of room for each and every single one of us, and each and every single one of us gets their own mansion. That doesn't sound like a very small place to me. It will be large enough. It, I, I read in the word that it said it's going to be about 1,500 miles long and 1,500 miles high. It will be huge. 
and I'm still blown away by trying to imagine. Could you imagine standing here right now? And the ceiling just opened up and we just saw a city come down. A city where we no longer cry. A city where we no longer have sadness and have everything that we need and see the most beautiful things we've ever seen in our entire life. Nobody has to build it. We don't have to call on Jeremy anymore. <laughs> Everything will already be in its place. The chief characteristic of the city will be holiness. And to me, that word in itself is one of the most powerful words in the English language. When we talk about God and we remember that he is holy, holy and everything about him is holy and when we come into the house of God guess what we are standing on holy ground it's holy and nothing in this place should be said that doesn't reflect the holiness of God so that means we are to love one another each and every single one of us in here amen because if you're standing on holy ground, you don't hurt other people. Amen. And then the gates of pearl. Now, when I always heard about the gates, the pearly gates, I visualized gates with thousands of small pearls lining up and down the gates. And I thought, oh my gosh, that is so gorgeous. How beautiful. I was mistaken because that's not what the Word of God had to say. It will be a vast, high, broad wall surrounding the New Jerusalem, punctuated by 12 gates, each made of pearl. Revelation 21, 17 through 21 says, He measured its walls, 144 cubits, According to the measure of a man, that is of an angel, and we know the angels are going to be huge. The construction of its wall was of jasper. The city was pure gold like glass. The 12 gates were 12 pearls. Each individual gate was a pearl. So it's one pearl on these big 12 gates. Can you imagine a pearl that size? And each one will have the name of the tribes of Israel. A wall will be made of jasper, which in biblical times was a crystal stone like a diamond. And the gigantic gates are made of solid pearl. It will leave us breathless. We can't even wrap our heads around it. We've seen beauty, but nothing like what God has in store for us. And that is what our loved ones are experiencing right now. As we enter through the gates, we'll be reminded of our Jesus and what he did for us. I told you, this just makes me weep. The power of God is so strong. When you talk about heaven, we will see the foundations of the city were adorned with all kinds of precious stones. The first is Jasper, the second Sapphire, the third is Chalcedony, I believe that's how you say it. <laughs> The fourth is emerald, the fifth is sardonyx, the sixth is sardius, the seventh crystal light, eighth barrel, ninth topaz, there's crystal phase, jenketh, and amethyst. Now imagine all these stones being massive enough to be the foundations of the new city. We're not even going to have concrete for our foundations, we're going to have jewels. 12 layers of jewels is what that foundation is going to be built on. Can you imagine? Imagine the most gorgeous lawn and the most manicured lawn 
in comparison to that. It will look like nothing. It will look like nothing. Imagine walking out and you're walking on jewels. <laughs> you look to the left and to the right of you and there's gates of pearl everywhere. There's nothing but beauty, nothing but happiness, nothing but peace, nothing but joy, no sickness, no sorrow. And God has that for you. The streets of gold, we've all heard about the streets of gold, but can you imagine what that looks like? Have you ever gone into that place in your mind and tried to figure out what on earth would streets of gold look like? What would that feel like? What would that sound like? Remember, we will be in our glorified bodies. So it is evident, and I'm so thankful for this, that our eyesight will be enhanced. Hallelujah for all of those who struggle with eyesight. Your eyesight will be enhanced, and you will be able to see all this beauty all around you. Colors will pop like never before. The beauty will just be so crystal clear. I've never seen anything crystal clear in my entire life. <laughs> so to have my eyesight enhanced, um, I, I'll, I'll wear glasses on this planet. If I can take them off there, because I know it's gonna be so much more beautiful there. And I wanna see everything that Jesus has for me there. We will never have to pay NYSEG again. <laughs> Hallelujah! <laughs> because we will need, we will never have to have lights. Jesus is the light. We'll never need a flashlight or a phone light because of a brilliant light that will emanate throughout the city. It's in the word of God, from the throne of God and from Jesus. They will be the constant light. We won't need the moon. We won't need a candle. We will need nothing. They will light the way for our eternity. Revelation 21, verse 23, says, and through 23, excuse me, says, The city had no need of sun or the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God illuminated it and the Lamb, and then the tree of life. We've all heard about the tree of life, and it didn't turn out so good the first time, right? <laughs> but Revelation 22 says, In the middle of its street on either side of the river is the tree of life, which bore 12 fruits, each tree yielding its fruit every month. The leaves of the trees were for the healing of the nations. One of the features of New Jerusalem is a river flowing down from the throne of God. Its water is clear as crystal, and on both sides of the river are the tree of life. Not just one, but multiple trees. Remember the word said that the leaves were used for the healing of the nations. We just read that. The word healing in the Greek language is therapia, which we get therapeutic from. Check this out. We will be able to eat the leaves of the tree, and these leaves will somehow give us a greater sense of our lives and our presence in heaven. This therapy will not enhance our holiness, but we will be perfectly holy but it will give us a greater sense of enjoyment and fulfillment by eating leaves. Our God even made the leaves special in heaven. So you know, like on your great days when you're really on top of your game and you feel like you've accomplished a lot in that day and you know you feel good inside because it was just one of those really good days you're going to have all of those really good days. And you're going to be on top of your game at all times. And I bet you those leaves are going to taste delicious. <laughs> it's amazing. This is most likely 
we're talk, when we talk about the river of God coming from the throne room, I have in here, this is most likely that it's not in the Bible, this is my guess. This is most likely the same river mentioned in Psalm 46, verse 4, where it says, There is a river whose stream shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. Heaven will indeed have plenty of room for all of us who are in relationship and saved by Jesus. I need to emphasize that. All dogs don't go to heaven. All people do not just automatically go to heaven. It doesn't matter how many good works we do. We are not going to get our way into heaven by doing good works. We have to have a relationship with Jesus. And a relationship is not two hours on Sunday and two hours on Wednesday and doing whatever we want when we walk out of the church house. That is not a relationship. It does not work with Jesus, and it certainly would not work with any of your spouses. Amen? If I thought for one moment that I could give my husband four hours out of the week and make him feel like I have respected, loved, or valued him, I would be sadly mistaken. Imagine how that makes Jesus feel. We need to work on relationship with Jesus daily. We need to let him know how much he means to us daily. We need to be witnessing and talking to people about him daily. We need to be, be the bridegrooms ready for him to return at all times because we know right now it could be any minute, amen? Are you ready? Are you ready? Or are you playing games? Because if you're playing games, I want you to come down to the altar this afternoon so we can get this thing right. It's so important. It's so important. We need to know. Oh, and this was really important too because I've had this question come up so many times. I put heaven will indeed have plenty of room for all of us who are in relationships saved by Jesus, including all of those who have died before the age of accountability. So if anyone's lost a child, I'm here to tell you that child is in heaven. They are in heaven. They, they're innocent. They are with Jesus. Whether you had a miscarriage, whether you had an abortion, or whether a child passed away, they are with Jesus. And I truly know in my heart of hearts, anybody who is mentally unstable, I don't believe for one minute that God would punish or send to hell somebody who did something when they were not mentally stable or capable of thinking clearly. I've had many people ask me about that. I had a brother who was very mentally unstable, who tried to commit suicide several times. He didn't want to commit suicide. He didn't want to live and deal with the demons that he dealt with. And he fought hard to fight against them. Well, he didn't make it. And I don't believe that God didn't bring him home because it was out of his hands. I believe he's with Jesus. Heaven is our eternal destination, and if our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life, that is our future home forever. I can't even imagine how absolutely stunning and perfect it will be. It's a holy place. Wrap your heads around the concept of never, ever, ever having to worry about anything again. Never feeling sad, never hurting, mentally or physically. Being with Jesus. I, every time I say it. Being with Jesus. 
Isn't that why we're here? Seeing our loved ones and being surrounded with pure joy and perfect love, being safe. For some, for some women, just to feel safe is so important, isn't it? There are so many women who just want to feel safe. They want to feel protected. No diseases, no ailments. God, that, God has that for you and I. Do you know that beyond the shadow of a doubt that you are in that Lamb's book of life? Revelation 22, 14 and 15 said, Blessed are those who do his commandments that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city, but outside are dogs and sorcerers who practice magic arts, the sexually immoral and murderers and idolaters and whoever loves and practices a lie. If you are involved in any of those things according to the word of God, you will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. So if you are messing around with that sort of thing, please come to the altar today because God wants to set you free. If you are not 100% sure if you were to die tonight, or when Jesus raptures us out of here, that you will be with him in all eternity, you will need to come to the altar. If you have never accepted Jesus, you will need to come to the altar. And we will lead you to the most important decision you will ever make in your life. Now, this wasn't very long because I... I believe that this altar should be full today <laughs> because I'm sure that there are some, some of you who do not have a personal relationship with Jesus. Maybe some of you have religion with Jesus, and there is a difference. Or there's some of you in this room who perhaps were once on fire for God. And you couldn't wait to have time with Jesus, but you've noticed that Little by little, that fire has started to lose its, its fizzle. Maybe it's, you're not reading the word anymore like you used to, or maybe you're not praying anymore. Maybe you're not coming to the house of God anymore. Whatever it is, the enemy moves in just in subtle ways. And maybe you've noticed that you've just started to pull away ever so slightly. That's a red flag, ladies, because that's how he operates. He is studying you. The word of God says he is seeking. That means he's watching and he's waiting to find where you are weak and he starts to poke you in those areas and you start to slowly pull away. And then before you know it, you're completely away from God. If you are in a backslidden state, you need to come to the altar because we're not supposed to be going backwards. We're supposed to be going forward and we should be farther today than we were last week. We should constantly be growing in God, not backing off. We should be more on fire for God today than we have ever been because this is the farthest in life we've ever been, amen? We've never been at this day before, amen? Because God wants us to all join him in heaven. Your names have all been put into the Lamb's book of life. Don't let it get blotted out. If you wanna see your loved ones, you need to be in heaven. <laughs> if you have loved ones in heaven, you need to be there. You know, I, I just spoke to somebody the other day joking around again. They were joking about hell and saying, yeah, I, I know I'm going to hell for the way I talk about my neighbors. And I said, don't ever say that again. Hell is not a joke. And you will not go down there and party and hang out with your friends. 
because you won't even be able to see one inch in front of you because you are in complete darkness, listening to tormenting, screaming, and crying, and demons, and just all the, just the scariest thing you can ever imagine by yourself. No one is going to help you because they're going to be living in their own torture, wishing someone could help them. Hell is not a joke. God is not a joke. But then there's heaven. And we took a little bit of a glimpse in it. I wish I could teach you more. I wish I could walk you through so much more. But there's so much waiting for you in heaven. And all God is saying is, I just want you. I just want your heart. I just want to spend time with you. I just want to know you. I just want to give you the best. I just want you to walk in what I've called you to do. Every single one in this room, you have purpose. I know some of you are told you were a mistake. Some of you are told, I wish you were never born. Some of you wish you were never born. That's lies of the enemy. That's a lie of the enemy. God formed you in your mother's womb. Whether she planned on it or not, he formed you in your mother's womb. And he said, I have purpose for you. I have destiny for you. And without you, certain people are not going to be reached. There are people that none of us here, none of the pastors or leaders here will ever be able to reach. But through you, these people can come to know Jesus. Through you, these people can be saved. Through you, these people can come into the house of God and excel in the things of God. Amen? That is what we want. We want to take as many people to heaven with us as we possibly can take. Because that is what it's all about. We have crowns waiting for us in heaven. Not these little paper crowns. Though these are really cute. <laughs> Somebody did a really cute job making these crowns. Is this what you want to cast at the feet of Jesus? Because if we're doing nothing for him... That's what we're going to lay at his feet. I want the crowns that Jesus has. Real, genuine crowns that absolutely mean something. And there are five different crowns that you can earn from Jesus. And one is called the crown of righteousness. And that is found in 2 Timothy 4 verse 8. And that crown is for those of us who are so eager for the return of Jesus. Is that you? Are you eager for the return of Jesus? Are you ready for the return of Jesus? Are you going to earn that crown? Or are you going to cast a paper crown at his feet? The second is the crown of rejoicing. And that is found in 1 Thessalonians 2 verse 19. And that's pretty much self-explanatory. Third is the crown of glory, and they actually call that the pastor crown. But that crown will not go to every pastor because not every pastor has been faithful to God. But those who are faithful and those who are really doing the word of God and following his instruction can earn the crown of glory. That's in 1 Peter 5 verse 4. Then the crown of life, which is martyred. There have been many Christians that have been martyred even in today. It's geared up today. There are a lot of innocent people who are being killed for the cause of Christ. Would you earn that crown? And then the crown of incorruptible. That's the crown for us who use self-control, that don't give in to the temptations of this world, and they keep their eyes on Christ. 
and follow in his footsteps. You have every opportunity to earn those crowns and no one can do it for us, amen? Which crowns do you prefer to throw at the feet of Jesus? Do you want the crowns that he's going to give you that you earn that I promise are worth more than the Grammy Awards of $10? <laughs> It'll be a beautiful, beautiful crown.